Well, hello, friends, and thanks for stopping by. If you've already subscribed to my channel, then you probably already know that my name is Chad. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and click that red button just below this video. Go ahead, I'll wait. So over the past 20 years that I've spent in the security industry, I've experienced my fair share of frustration associated with ever-changing technologies, vulnerability, system integrations, threats, and most importantly, education. Today I want to explore PoE, or Power Over Ethernet. This is a subject that seems to be the topic of discussion among many in the security industry, especially when it comes to installing multi-sensor cameras, outdoor IP cameras, and other advanced features such as IR illuminators or heaters and blowers. This of course is due to the high power consumption or high PoE requirement in order to power these devices. Let me go grab a few of my PoE cameras along with some supplies, maybe a PoE switch or two, and we'll go ahead and get started. All right, so before we get started, we should first touch on power over ethernet and make sure that we hit a couple of the key points. We routinely hear of PoE referred to as 802.3 AF, AT, or BT. I don't want to get too deep into the standard, but we should be aware of what the standard is. PoE technology relies on the 802.3 standard, which was set forth by the Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineers. This standard was created to govern how networking equipment should operate in order to promote inoperability between devices. PoE-capable devices can either be power sourcing equipment, or a PSE, or the PD devices, better known as power devices. Sometimes they can even be both. The devices that transmit power are the PSE devices, while the device that receives power is considered your PD device. Most of the PSE devices will be network switches or PoE injectors, which are typically used with non-PoE switches or when I need PoE or PoE Plus at the edge due to the power requirement of that device. When purchasing your PSE network devices, you should make sure that the maximum power budget of that switch is going to be sufficient for what you intend to support. Identify the manufacturer's power spec or the budget per port to know if your edge devices are gonna receive the power that they're gonna need from that switch. When we plug in a PoE edge device or the PD device such as a camera, it's gonna communicate with the PSE chip within the PoE switch to indicate that it does require power and that it is online. The PSE will then determine what type of PoE how much power is going to be needed, they'll create a handshake and establish a connection between the PSE and the PD device. So let's dive into the challenges. Many technicians spend countless hours troubleshooting PoE networks to determine whether or not the edge device is receiving PoE or to determine whether or not it's getting the proper amount of PoE. While there are plenty of test equipment or measuring devices that allow me to certify, meter, and even map out cables, I recently found this little gem from Hobbs on Amazon. It comes in at sub $60. It's an inline power over ethernet voltage and current tester. It comes with a nifty little carrying case. And as you can see inside, they also give you a cat six patch cable along with what they call their PD simulator device. The inline PoE detector has an LCD screen, quickly identifies the PoE type. There is no power supplies, no batteries. It automatically powers up as soon as it connects to a PSE device, aka your PoE switch or injector. There is a slide switch on the side of the unit that allows me to choose between PSE status and display. Now I will admit I was a bit confused when I first saw this. The PSE status will flash when a PSE device is undetermined or it cannot create a handshake from the PD device. That's where the PD simulator comes in. I'll touch on that a bit later. If the PD device is present, a handshake between the two devices will occur and the LED that you can't really see because it's not lit up will illuminate green. When we flip the switch to display, 
The LCD screen will then display the pairs in which power is being detected along with the voltage and the current or the power draw. So let's go check this out. So as you can see, I brought out a few items for testing. For our PSE device, I have a PoE inserter from Preferred Power Products. I've got a PoE Plus network switch that I've been carrying around in my backpack for years to conduct field demos and troubleshooting. Finally, I have a Luxel 52 port gigabit PoE Plus network switch. As you can see, I've put a label on the cable that Luxel XMS 5248P. This is because the switch is actually located in my network closet. It's a switch that I use every day to run my entire office. I really couldn't bring it in and put it on the table with the rest of the products. Here's the switch in action. For the PD devices, I broke out an Inaxis 8 megapixel multi sensor dome. I've got the FLIR Soros DH390, which comes with a thermal sensor and it combines with a 1080p camera along with IR and visible LED illuminators. And also the Raytech Bar02 network illuminator that comes with both infrared and white light illumination. This should give us a good variety for our testing. If you are curious about any of these items, I've included links to all of them in the description below. Most troubleshooting begins at the PSE device or in the network closet. I'm going to start by connecting a patch cable to my PoE source. In this case, it's going to be the PoE inserter. I slide the switch on the PoE tester to PSE status. I then connect the tester to the other end of the patch cable. You will notice that the LED is flashing, meaning it cannot see a PD or an edge device. This is where the simulated PD device comes in handy. If you're in the field without a camera or an edge device, or perhaps on a job site where a camera is malfunctioning, this will allow you to connect at the end of the cable run to determine if the device is bad. If I flip the switch on the PoE status after I connect the simulated PD device, you will see that the power is on pairs 1, 2, 3, and 6. We have 53 volts DC and 2 watts are being drawn from the device. To demonstrate how quick we can switch between devices or ports, I'm going to disconnect the PoE inserter and move to the PoE Plus switch. Once again, I see that the green light is flashing. I connect my simulated PD device, and this time we find that the power is being sent on pairs 4, 5, 7, and 8. We have 52 volts DC, and we are drawing 2 watts of power. The majority of problems occur at the edge. Many times due to cable distance or the PSE, we don't have enough power at the end of our cable run. But how do we measure that? Let's move to the end of the cable and connect a multi-sensor camera. Whoops, a little difficult to read upside down. Okay, so we see now that the camera is drawing 4 watts of power and the PoE switch is sending 52 volts DC on pairs 4, 5, 7, and 8. I'm testing this with a 6 foot patch cord, but if we had a long cable run, the voltage would be much less due to voltage drop and wire attenuation. I will cover that in a separate video. I'll put a little switcheroo here and do the same test with the FLIR Soros camera and we find that this camera is pulling 3 watts of power. The Raytech IP illuminators will best illustrate the dynamic wattage requirements of many of the IP security devices and why being able to measure the wattage requirement at the edge is so important. We see that the illuminator is drawing a very modest 3 watts when we first connect it. But watch what happens when I turn on the IR illuminators. You see the wattage increases to 9 watts, 1.8 amps when the IRs begin to illuminate purple in the background. 
This is a hybrid illuminator, which will combine in infrared and white lights. When I turn on the white lights at 50%, you'll see that the wattage is 8 watts, 1.5 amps. As I increase the brightness of these illuminators, you'll see that the wattage requirements increase also. And finally, we can set up a white light deterrent, which will cause the illuminator to flash. As we would expect, the wattage requirement changes from 3 watts to 9 watts, depending on whether the white light is on or off. So there you have it. This little inline test module can save you time and most importantly, frustration. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to give me a big thumbs up and subscribe to my video channel. In future videos, I'll be covering a lot of the features and the products that were discussed in today's video. Until next time, stay safe everyone.